Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Jazz Biz 101. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. His name is Julius Tolentino, great saxophonist, educator, and all around great guy. So let's give it up for Julius Tolentino. Yeah. Hey, Woo. Peter. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks for uh, joining me on this remote uh, interview. It's been an interesting experience so far. And um, this is definitely going to be a great talk. So I just want to get to know, like, what are you doing in this current COVID-19 situation? As we all know, it's like it's been kind of crazy um, and just trying to adapt to new environments. So uh, what have you been up to? I've been thinking, I think in the beginning, like everybody else, it was just pure shock. And, you know, uh, for a minute, it was just like you didn't know what to do with your time because you had so much, you know, time at home and not leaving the house and no gigs and you know, my school closed down. So then we started teaching remotely and uh, things have been actually more busy now than ever. And it's, it's crazy. It's nice to be home and be able to be this busy and not have to leave the house, it's, you know, cause I get to still spend time with the family. Um, yeah. But you know, it's craziness. Everybody's online um, doing school or, you know, work and it's, it's a different, different time, but you know, I think, we'll all be better off, you know, after we get through this. And, and I've just learned so much about myself, so much about my teaching. And it's been, it's been, it's, it's been a positive thing in that way. It definitely seems like, uh, you know, a lot of these organizations are going to be moving to more of an online realm and it's going to open up opportunities in other ways. I think once everything reverts back to normal, which I assume eventually will happen, it doesn't seem like it, but eventually it will. And so it just adds another layer, uh, which is great. I mean, for me, it's kind of uh, forced me to do some projects that I was either, uh, you know, kind of had on the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, it's come to the forefront. I just have to get it done because it's the time to do is now. So. That's what we're doing. How have you actually transitioned um, some of your business, uh, both musically and, you know, just in the education realm uh, to an online space? Like what, ha what has been happening to make that transition? Um, I made the transition pretty quick. Um, just when I realized that we'd be doing so many things online, I, I already had a lot of the equipment. I went back to my school and got a lot of things that I needed and I ordered, you know, a bunch of things right at the beginning. Um, so, and cause I'm familiar with teaching online. Uh, I, I teach students all over the, the country. Um, I've been doing that for a little bit, but, but knowing that I was just going to be doing that entirely, I, I wanted to make sure I was set up my, my attic, uh, like a space to just record and zoom and, mm -hmm. you know, so I have a nice little space up there and, and, uh, getting the ethernet cables was actually really key in my household. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. uh, the kids are online doing school and you know, the Wi-Fi gets, gets funny when everybody's on it. So you have to be able to have a solid feed. So that's been a big, big difference. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think just to give people context, um, you know, I actually known Julius for a very, very long time. Um, actually had you as a, a region jazz director back when I was in high school. So, you've been very involved in the education realm when it comes to jazz and for a long time. And so, you know, now to have everything moved to an online space, you know, it's just it's so necessary to adapt all your equipment and all the technology to, you know, make it happen. It only makes sense. Is it mostly zoom that these organizations that you work for, they, they've been using? Yeah. I teach at Newark Academy and we, we are primarily using zoom. I know a lot okay. of uh, schools are using, uh, some kind of Google platform. I haven't really, I'm not too familiar with that. Okay. Um, I teach at NJYS, New Jersey Youth Symphony. We've been using Zoom as well. And all my private teaching is on Zoom and clinics and things like that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah no no issue so far? No, I mean, I mean, think of the beginning when I, you know, when I didn't realize that uh, it was, you know, it was a Wi-Fi issue and, and, you know, you figure out ways to teach your ensembles differently. Like I said, like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm learning right. something about my teaching every time I do this. Mm -hmm. um teaching a big band is it's not the same when you can't play next to each other so how do you make make uh that time you know important and significant and and get become better musicians as a group as a, as a director so it's it's been a great it's been a good process i have to say it's unfortunate the circumstances but I, i'm learning a lot and I'm, I'm just trying to take the positives out of it 
Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. And, and um, you know, my re my reach is, is just way, it's way bigger now, you know, like to be able to, to reach students, you know, all around the world now. And it's, 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 it's interesting how it's all coming together. Well, actually just to give everyone context, uh, if you haven't done so already, please watch, uh, Julius's uh, video of the Newark Academy students uh, performing as a big band. It's all put together like those ensemble videos you've been seeing, but uh, Julius did a really great job and uh, he did that all through these programs he's about to uh, talk about and how he learned. So uh, maybe you could just give us some context on that project. Yeah, I mean, I knew I wanted to do a virtual big band um, and I wanted to do it with my high school band. I'd, I'd done some professional ones and uh it's such a great process just doing it myself like this is you know us jazz musicians unless you're maybe on in la you're you're not doing as much like studio work in studio work meaning like playing like with click tracks all the time i mean at least myself i've done that a couple of times but it's not like primary what i do as a jazz musician you know um uh, even in the studio it's more of like a live situation and we're not like you know cutting right. and pasting all the time right mm -hmm. but um to do that with a click track of myself on all these projects, these virtual projects, I'm like, man, this is, this is a great experience. You know, I feel like this is pretty cool. And to give students that experience is a, is a whole different thing. It, it really pushes their limits. They didn't really get it. It took a whole, maybe two weeks of telling the students how to think about it and how to submit mm -hmm. their videos. And it was a learning process for me too, you know, trying to get the sound right and things like that. Basically keeping it simple for the students um, and just having them be able to execute as clean as they can without me on top of them telling them what to do. You know, they're in their rooms by themselves listening to a click track. It's a whole different thing. It's yeah. not easy. And uh, I felt pretty defeated at first, honestly, like hearing my students like kind of sit back the recordings they were sending. I was like, oh man, I have failed as a director. These kids cannot play to a recording. <laughs> But, uh, but I realized it was just, it's just a totally different experience and they just needed, they needed some time to do it just like anybody would. Yeah. Um, Look, professionals even have a hard time. Yes. You know that, yeah. you know? Yes. That's what I was trying to explain to them. And I feel like, you know, we're getting better as a band by doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And I really wanted to put something out there as a high school band that was really swinging because there's not really that much out there. And I think we we're like the first ones to really kind of get out a, a, a swinging, you know, rendition of, of some some big band music as a high school band. And I think it's pretty high level. And, and the, uh, it's been received super well. I mean, I've had so many people contact me about, um, you know, how I did this. And, and my whole story is that if you, if I can do it, you can do it because <laughs> I have never worked with logic. I have never worked with final cut pro. And those are the two platforms that I knew that I had to get right when this went down. And I, I learned them by watching just tutorials and, um, for me, it was more just going through the process, actually doing it, you know, hands on, just trying to do it and then calling up people when I had questions and doing little Zoom lessons on it. And it might be just a, a Zoom lesson on why is my sound not working? Yep. You know, like yep. little just things that get you get. I know from experience, just like, I'm just going to reach out to somebody because I will spend a whole hour trying to figure this out and look it up on an hour tutorial when I need this five second information. <laughs> So just reach out to people, you know, and, you know, I'm creating all these shortcuts and trying to put it in, 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 in some kind of format for, for band directors and for professionals and, and students that want to do this on a small or a big, you know, bigger platform or, you know, whatever project they want to do. Um, I'm going to be giving a, a, a webinar in, uh, I think it's May 6th. Through, oh, fantastic. Uh, the, yeah. Through the jazz education network. Um, just because, I mean, so many people have been asking, so we're going to just try and put it out there. Great. So we'll just keep everyone in um, contact, you know, let everyone know when that's going to happen. Cause I know a lot of people can definitely use that information <laughs> for themselves. I know myself, you know? like I'm going to go on there and give this webinar, but I don't know. I don't know these programs. <laughs> like most people know the programs, but I think that's, that's kind of why uh, I should be doing it. Cause like if I can do it and just show them like the simple things that I've learned to kind of yeah. just make it happen. Mm -hmm. And then I think I'm going to learn a lot because I'm sure, I'm sure there's people going to be telling me, oh, there's a shortcut to do this, shortcut to do that. And I can't wait to find out more because I can't, you know, I can't sit through all these tutorials and try to figure that out. It's, it's, it's not, yeah. you know, it's mind numbing. <laughs> that, makes, that makes a lot of sense because you're learning 
from the first time and you see the whole process and it's right. so fresh in your mind mm -hmm. it's like you know you can transfer that information That's very true. quickly That's um true. and it's it's harder for people to talk about basics when they've been doing it for their entire lives, you know, and that's the same yes. with music as you know, like oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> not the best players are the best teachers all the time. Right. You know? Right. That's true. Um, so yeah, it's like, that's very it, true. It makes a lot of sense. I've, <laughs> had, lot I've of had a lot of issues as a musician. I think that's why I'm such a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Made a lot of mistakes in the past. <laughs> yes. Yes. Still, still am. So I'm always learning. <laughs> the programs, uh, just to reiterate that you used, um, to create this virtual big band, it was Final Cut um, Pro and um, Logic Pro X Pro, right? So, and these are Apple exclusive, just so people know. Sorry, PC users, you're gonna have to find some other way. That's great to hear that you know you're definitely willing to go and you know learn these programs. So, how many, um, how long have you had to learn these programs? Was it's only been like a month right i, I only jeez logic i logic was a little easier to learn because mm -hmm. i i had a little familiarity with uh, pro tools uh -huh. and i'm actually liking logic a lot more it's a lot of fun i, I kind of i'm really enjoying it once i started you know being able to get through those uh those stuck spots yeah um and uh but just to get the students to play and go back and forth and keep submitting and submitting mm -hmm. that took about uh, you know at least a, a week two weeks maybe of just trying to get the master. I mean, the, the basic process is getting all the students to record with a decent sound, extracting the sound from the video. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and just that in itself, I, it took me a while to figure out how to do that. Like, so I had it like, at first I sent a guide track of just the chart that we were doing, the originally Natalie right. Cole thing. Right. That was not working out. So mm -hmm. I had my bass player record with a metronome. Yep. And then I put a count off in front of that. And I used that as a guide track. I added the drums. So I had bass drums and then guitar. And then I gave that to everybody. They handed it back and it was sad again. <laughs> so I said, okay, I think we're going to have to record the lead players. So we recorded the lead players so everybody could have like, you know, cause those are usually strongest players, especially yep. in high school. So that they're, they're playing great or, you know, maybe not so great. I just have them do it over again and get some, you know, decent lead playing. Then I hand it to the rest of the band. And that's eventually how we kind of, put it all together all together yeah that's fantastic yeah it's definitely uh good to create a process and understand how these you know just like any other band like knowing how who's the stronger strongest players and really utilizing their skills to help with the overall teamwork it makes a lot of sense you know in this sense yeah um, and i think i think the process could be different for um different bands a different mm -hmm. piece of music you know yeah, we're no doing about it. we're doing some really difficult music that's like all these time changes uh with um with njys right now new jersey Youth symphony jazz right and uh man it's like it's more metronomic you know it's not it's like it's straight eighth tune so it's like has a little bit different mentality and, and so i've approached it that way just knowing the process it was it's, it's already easier you know the third or fourth time around uh i know you're a killing player but maybe you could just talk about your um uh, performance career and then how you got into teaching from all that i was lucky to have a great band director in high school named Scott Chamberlain, a uh, wonderful jazz trombonist. Uh, you know, he was just a great educator and kind of really turned me on to jazz. And, and from there, I just met a bunch of local jazz musicians and uh, going to the Peppermint Lounge. My dad used to take me to the Peppermint yeah. Lounge. And I, yeah. I, I really consider that a, a part of my uh, early education because it was really the way to learn tunes and inspired me and, you know, all the great musicians Your dad was that, a musician? that came with that. My dad was a musician. He, he oh. became a jazz fan as I became a jazz musician. Uh, wow. Not too many, you know, he, he could sing a little bit, but, but I, I'm like really the first one in my family to kind of really deal with okay. music. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, he would take me to the sessions all the time, you know? Mm. Uh, and then, you know, I ended up at the hard school of music studying with a, a jazz legend named Jackie McLean. Um, and he really kind of set me on the right path on how to, to, to approach this music. Uh, I owe him so much. Uh, and, um, it also, you know, that's basically how my concept of teaching came about is, is kind of through, through Jackie McLean's school of oh. teaching and kind of codified it in my own way. Um, uh, you know, but, um, yeah, but through him, I was lucky. I moved to New York and, um, you know, just like a lot of people, you know, right out of school, just trying to, you know, scrape up some gigs and play with many people as possible. I had specific goals musically. Um, 
Illinois Jaquette was a band that I wanted to, you know, I wanted him to play in his band because he was one of the few, mm-hmm. um, you know, older musicians around that had a big band that was taking younger musicians. And I had a lot of friends that were in the band and actually Jackie uh, recommended me for the band and, and I got an audition and, and I stayed with him, you know, until he passed away. And that was at least five years, um, you know, allowed me to, to tour a little bit. My first tours, uh, you know, in the South America and across the U.S., um, and then through that big big band experience, now I feel, consider that as a grad school because I, I did play in a big band at heart and was a great big band led by Steve Davis, but but really dealing with the traditional, you know, music of you know Ellington and Basie, really started dealing with that when I moved to New York and being in the Illinois band and and you know had some stints with with the Basie band and the Ellington band, uh, and just all the great bands in New York, uh, you know Christian McBride's big band is, is is another one that's working around. Right, but right. you know those kind of big bands and small groups. I've been fortunate to play with uh, when I first moved to New York. Eric Reed Septet recorded with him and played with him, so that was like a really formative wow. experience for me in the beginning. And um, you know Lewis Hayes uh, for the last couple of years with the Cannibal Band and his quintet. I sub with them every once in a while, and that's an incredible experience whenever I can play with him. Another legend. You know, mm-hmm. I, I consider those those people that you know elder statesmen. Um, are really uh, the ones that I think about when I think about my playing career because they, they, you know, those are the people you want to be around. Most definitely, pick up all that information and just live that history. That makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, it definitely comes through in your teaching. You know that um, the fire that they were putting out, you know, with their own ensembles, like feeding that into the education realm. You know, lighting a fire under the education realm. Like this is what we offer. You know, it's like. Yeah, it's it's uh, very clear because I remember distinctly, you know, having you as a region jazz director. I was just like, oh, like, you know, this is what music uh, can feel like, you know, <laughs> I remember that experience. Cool. So that I mean, that makes a lot of sense, you know, just the performance and like uh, just all the people you played with. I mean, especially Jackie McLean, just, you know, you watch that documentary. Uh, uh, McLean, Jackie McLean on Mars. On Mars. Yeah. yeah. Oh my oh, God! You know it's very that video enlightening. So many times. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah great video. me too. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you could just talk into uh, talk about like uh, how you really got into the education realm, like how you put your right foot inside. Well, I, you know, I think uh, early on, even in high school, um, I, I realized that I yeah I, I kind of really enjoy teaching, you know, um, and then in college I was able to teach some private lessons, like a studio, just to make some extra money, and then through Jackie McLean's Institute, the Artist Collective. I was one of the teachers there, uh, working in the big band, working with private students, and then started building my own like private studio a little bit. And then one summer, it was the only summer that Jack McLean had a summer institute, and that I know of. And um, besides the Artist Collective summer program, and, like he had something at heart, and I was staying at heart, so I was like one of the teachers. I was like, mm-hmm. I teach side by side with Jack McLean. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I started developing like ways to teach younger students how to play the language a little bit and kind of. Yeah, my thing is, um, you know, I, I struggled a lot with uh, my ears, you know, in college, and, and, and mm-hmm. I studied really hard to kind of work on that, realizing how, how important that is, that important, you know, once that's one of the main concepts of trying to become musicians, to kind of get bigger ears and, and, and hear, be able to hear everything. Um, and I, because of those struggles, I, I, I kind of know how to uh, give students certain pieces of the language, you know, in a very kind of formatted, you know, strategic way to kind of hear them, have them hear functions. And that kind of allows them to transcribe at some point, but I don't just throw transcription on them because that's, that's what I tried doing. It was a very frustrating process. So kind of building up their ears to the, to the where to the, they can get to that point And then, um, you know, and then, and then just guiding them from there, uh, yeah. teaching students how to become their own best teacher, uh, is, is the main concept from the beginning, you know? Um, so I think, I think teaching has always been kind of a thing that I wanted to do in the back of my, you know, in my head. And, and, and even right out of school, um, mm-hmm. I didn't start teaching at New York Academy, you know, right away. I, I uh, had a pretty healthy uh, teaching studio at another place in Livingston uh, oh. for many years. You know? Is that the... Um... Andy's Family Music Center. It, okay. Yeah. Yeah. God bless yeah. this man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I, 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 did, I did that a uh, number of years ago. Yeah, yes. I, was, I was over there. And... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I was there with the original history. with the original guy before uh, you know he passed away. And, yeah, and, yeah, uh, for sure. He, you know, that's just there's a lot of history there. And it, it was a great gig. I met my wife there. Met some really great dear friends there. <laughs> I um, met your wife there. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, that's she, was, she was she was she was a piano teacher there. Okay. Uh, so um, and you know it was one of the few kind of teaching gigs like that where you could actually get uh, health insurance. So I you know yeah in New York I had right. health insurance. I had my first baby on that you know health insurance and it was oh, wow. you know so yeah it was, it was now a you have three yes now <laughs> you have three <laughs> yeah but uh yeah you know i think uh teaching is not for everybody i mean you know i it, it's it's funny like nowadays it's like um you know you like to think that you know if you're playing this music you definitely want it to teach it and it's it's a part of the music you know, but, but I don't think everybody's necessarily cut out to be a teacher, you know, mm -hmm. um, for me, that's like, I, 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 you know, I don't teach if I'm not in front of a band every day, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like having dreams about teaching. So <laughs> it's just like being off the bandstand for a couple, you know, if you're not wow. gigging that okay. much, you have dreams. It's the same thing. It's like, they come hand in hand for me. It's like, I can't do one without the other now. And, um, I love wow. that aspect of, 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 I just love teaching, you know, that's what, that's what I feel like I really have. That's my calling to, to kind of do. And that's, um, well, but really I see, you know, I see, I see a lot of teachers, you know, I see a lot of musicians that try to try to teach because it's a necessity and, and, you know, I mean, I, I understand that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, when you're dealing with, 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 especially with young students, you know, I think that can be, that can be hurtful too. You know, if you don't have the right yeah. personality and the right, right. Uh, social skills to deal with, with students, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it could be a fragile experience for them if, if you're not, you know, yeah. doing good for them. So. That's true. That's true. Uh, what would you say are signs that you aren't a great teacher? I mean, aren't like, a great teacher? You know say, not a great teacher, but I guess like what I'm saying is, uh, how do you know where to improve? Because, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people come out with performance degrees. They don't tell you like, oh, this is a sign that maybe you should work on this aspect of your teaching, right? Like, yeah. So how, what are, the, what are some signs that I mean, there's different teaching. If you're teaching privately, I mean, I, in any teaching, I think the organization is, is a big key. You know, not, not, not all musicians, not all people in general are, are organized uh, with their time and with the way they approach everything. Like I, I, I kind mm -hmm. of, I'm pretty analytical with how I break things down um, and that's how I teach. Uh, so yeah, you know, organization is, is, is key. Um, it's a, it's a that big, makes a lot of sense. it's a big part of it. Um, you know, just being able to just be able to relate to, to students if you're dealing with young students. I mean, I, I'm a kid at heart, so I really enjoy my time <laughs> okay. hanging with kids. That's true and too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I try to have a lot of fun with them. Um, and uh, yeah, you should see some videos, guys. I mean, just <laughs> the pranks and stuff. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, we have good they time. Love you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You know, I, it keeps me young. And I one of the thing, great things about teaching is like the more students you you meet along the way, it's like your your family gets bigger and bigger. It's like mm. You know, and, oh, that's and so it's, true. it's like, you yeah. know, because you consider them all family, the part of your, you know, like your kids. So it's like, you, you just, they just grow, they get bigger and they, they go on to have kids of their own. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a trip to see, uh, all my students doing really well. And, and, and you know, we of course still keep in touch. And, yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing for yeah. sure. Continuing the lineage that way too, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Different ways. Um, but yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think that would yeah. be some good signs. <laughs> Organization. I mean, if, if you, yeah. you know, I'm not saying everybody has to have like, you know, the, the same passion that I have for teaching, but mm -hmm. you, you know, if you, if you, if you're doing the right thing and, and, and not just going through the motions to, to, you know, mm -hmm. just for the sake of, of teaching, you know, you teach because you want to teach and, and, and feel like you have something to give students. And, and, you know, I think once you get the bug of, uh, seeing a student, um, be able to, you know, have those light bulbs go off and, and learn something from you and, you know, and have it like enrich their own lives. You realize like, oh man, this is, this is it. This is what I want to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's that fulfilling kind of feeling that you're, you yeah. get for sure. Right. Right. <laughs> After a long day and you see that they actually get something that's right. like kind of a hard concept or something, you know, it's like, it makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a lot of that happens over a long period of time. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so building up that, yeah. you know, some, you know, of course, there's days where you just see improvement in students like very quickly, and 
right. but most of the time it's it's it's, just, it's the long haul you know i know that you do a ton of stuff and i don't think that you sleep uh <laughs> i haven't been lately. not not because i've been working i've been working a lot but i just can't sleep lately it's been this whole thing is you know it's, it's yeah it's, it's wearing on everybody but. yeah no doubt about it but even before this i mean like i saw i see you here and i see you there and there's a ton of stuff that you do um so and plus you have a big family so what's like some good time management techniques that you implement into your life to make it all happen you know well i mean i definitely have to give credit to my wife because she's uh, very understanding and super supportive um and she reins me in when I need to be reined in with, yeah. with all the amount of things I want to do and and how to manage my time and, and, and you know spend quality time with the family. Now that they're getting older, it's you know they're doing music and we're doing projects together, so that's it's 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 great. Yeah, I mean I just have a lot of goals. Like every, it, it seems like I get busier and busier every year. But what it, what what happens is that um, you know, there's just like different layers of of, of everything that I'm doing, mm -hmm. and. When I look at those layers, I just have to kind of figure out which 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 of those layers are, are really more, more important to me and which are really fulfilling me artistically, um, sometimes financially. You know what 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 is worth doing sometimes financially. You know, sometimes sometimes comes comes down to that. Yeah. And then, you know, making uh making choices. You know, every year I kind of reevaluate what I'm doing and uh, mm -hmm. trying to, you know make the right choices for the next year and, and just try to do something new. I'm always trying to do something new and add to spreading, you know, spreading jazz education in, in some way, you know, mm. first, you know, lessons, teaching a new academy, it, that was like all encompassing, you know, but once I started getting a hand, handle on it, my got, got my groups to a super high level and I've, I've built up a, a, a kind of like a, you know, it's, it's just built up on itself year after year. So it's, it's a well-oiled machine, you know, and, and I'm, I'm always tweaking that, but it, it's tweaks now, you know, so uh, mm. starting a program, a brand new program at New Jersey Youth Symphony was, was a, it was a big, yeah. you know, big goal. And, sure. and, and, and now that's going great. Um, starting my own thing with JTOL Music and through that, I've, I've been able to start my own summer camp. Last summer was our first one on my own and through up in partnership with NJYS and then starting a jazz festival i started yeah. my own jazz festival that was oh whew, my god that almost gave me a heart attack that was craziness um and then this oh, year man. we're gonna have to go and do it virtually you know and it's right. very exciting mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm like excited about the process of doing it virtually because i have so many bands that i work with um uh, actually a couple two bands in australia that that, that came to the school or, or or have come to the school that yeah we're, uh, yeah we're gonna try and have involved in, in our virtual program and, fantastic you know all over I, i've been to so many different states through jet with jazz lincoln center like working with with other bands too so you know it's all going to come to fruition with, with with this online thing and i'm excited about that um i'm also doing band director academies i've, I've done them with jazz at lincoln center and i've done them okay. on, through jtol music on my own you know i've done mm -hmm. one in uh, texas and i was supposed to do one in uh, north carolina at the end of this year It'll probably be postponed right um but right. uh right now it's still on but we'll see like you said, I think just having those clear goals and um, also just being really passionate about, you know, the field that you're in, like really just doesn't really make it seem like I'm, I'm sure it doesn't make it seem like, OK, this is like a lot, a lot. But it's uh, something that you're willing to deal with, I guess. You know, that's the other thing. Yeah, it's just exciting. You know, yeah, all these projects I'm doing, I have to be excited about if if it's something that I'm, I'm putting down, it's because something is has that you know is not as exciting to me for yeah. whatever reason this is something that interests me quite a bit uh just in terms of the asian american experience uh well first you know i want to ask that uh if you identify yourself as an asian american jazz artist um and if you have ever put yourself out there as such and uh the other question would be uh what does that mean to you how does that impact your career or how does that impact uh whatever you do as a musician so i'll just leave that up to you i, I guess i identify myself as a, as a filipino american you know mm -hmm. which is a you know asian american but um you know i was born in this country mm -hmm. uh, my parents were uh immigrants um and you know as far as like 
relating that as like a, a Asian American jazz musician, I, I, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, how I see music is, um, we all have our, our different experiences. You know, this, this music that we love so much is, is, is has been developed, you know, and, and, you know, come about through the black experience, their hardships in this country. Right. Um, so just learning about the music, you know, like anybody would want to learn about the profession, you know, and, and getting into that kind of, you know, that deep history and, and learning about the culture, that's it's just such a great en endeavor. But like me, I, I don't necessarily like, um, you know, I didn't grow up with Filipino folk music, you know? Um, yeah. You yeah. know, my parents actually, um, though I know I have a lot of shared experience with all my Filipino brothers and sisters out there, uh, especially, you know, coming here and having immigrant parents, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure like a lot of them, we don't speak Tagalog or, or whatever na native Filipino language they're speaking because our parents didn't want us to have, uh, you know, uh, an accent. They want us to, to kind of blend in and, and be, be yeah. you know, pure Americans and, 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 and especially Filipino culture, they just love American culture. If you go back, to, you know, I've only been back to the Philippines yeah. like two or three times and, and uh, they just love everything American. So, um, so that's a different, it's a different Asian culture, I think, in some ways, you uh -huh. know, um, but I think how that translates to music is, uh, you know, not necessarily like my experience as, uh, you know, like these are my Filipino roots and this is what, you know, my, how my music is different. It's not, I don't, I don't, I don't really see it that way for myself. Um, yeah. I think, I think it's great to hear different people bringing so many, so much of their culture into jazz music and, and, and keeping the roots of jazz music and, and you can hear all the world influences. It, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, for me personally, you know, I, I'm just, I'm dealing with, you know, maybe, you know, not approaching it like, okay, I'm going to bring Filipino jazz. I don't know what that would be, but. <laughs> right, but, right. But, um, mm -hmm. but my experience as, as a, you know, as a Filipino American, mm -hmm. um, just being on the scene is, I think is interesting. And I think representing Right. My culture is is important. You know, I, I took part in the Filipino Jazz Festival in, uh, at the Catalina. They had there a couple years one. in a row. There was one for a little bit. Oh wow! It's not happening anymore. Yeah, and it was it was okay. that was pretty amazing actually. That was a pretty awesome Whoa. experience to have all these Filipinos come from the Philippines and from LA, and we put on a, a festival uh, on the West Coast. Um, wow, okay. that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was a really cool experience. Um, you know, I've I've been fortunate enough to teach a lot of young, you know, Asian students and Filipino students. So, mm -hmm. um, being able to relate to them and and you know, I think it's it's, you know, when it comes down to it, I you know, I was born here and I'm 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 American and I, I'm playing classical American music as Jack and McLean would like to say. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's for a lot sure. of names for it now. Yeah, but um, that's what he used to say was classical American music. Yeah, it's definitely uh, interesting because like there's a big difference between being Asian and an Asian American, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of people do come here to study in music, but often more than not, it's like, we're just grouped together. Like Asian Americans and Asian musicians, like, okay, they're all just Asian. But like, as we know, being born here and being raised here, it's like anyone else, <laughs> you know, being born and raised here. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting to see, um, you know, there's not really that many, I would say Asian American jazz artists than there are Asian artists. I don't even know statistically if that's true, but from what I see on the scene, you know, it's, that's like more of the, you know, just what you see, you know what I mean? Uh, what's out there. Um, I was just interested to see like uh, what your thoughts were about that aspect. Cause uh, it, you know, it's definitely like a different experience. And I'm just trying to let people know, like, you know, it's not sometimes, we don't all want to be grouped together. And most, most often than not, we don't want to be discriminated just because, you know, we look a certain way, but um, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever encountered any form of many, you know? many, many times. Okay. Many, many times. I mean, how do you, how do you deal with that? Uh, I, I just, I, I just don't stand for it. <laughs> you know, even at yeah, a very young age, I feel that. in a very young age, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I have no problem standing up for that and, and, you know, Luckily, yeah. in, at that young age, I was still in a position where I could say, no, I'm not going to deal with that. 
you know, that kind of comment, I just don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. You can call somebody else and, and, and walk away in the middle of a gig. I have to, yeah, you know, but because you you know, you gotta be, you gotta send the message, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Any discriminatory, you know, kind of behavior is, it's just not, you know, there's no place for it in this, in this music, you know? Yeah. Especially in this music. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. It's it's interesting to also note that, uh, you know, when it comes to race discussions, it's often a white versus black thing. Right. And so like, and I think, I think get thrown like, I think that's where, at least for me, you know, at least for me, I think that's where it's kind of interesting Mm -hmm. as a Filipino, Asian American. Like I always felt like I was kind of in the middle. Um, Right. Like, you know, I have all my, you know, musician friends, you know, all my white friends or all my African American friends, you know, they're, it's like, I don't know, they kind of saw me as their own. You know, I, I felt like I wasn't I really even seen as Asian. I was like, I was, when I was with, with, with my white musician friends, I was white. And if I were my black musician friends, I'd be black. It was just like, you know, so I would hear, you know, yeah. I would hear, you know, certain things, you know, politics, whatever on, on either side. Yep. And it's interesting to hear either side and be in the middle and be like, oh. Yeah, yeah. And then they're, to, they're like, what's your opinion? You're like, I'm just the moderator. Sometimes yeah. I feel like just the moderator situation. Like, a little bit, well, yeah. you know, like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> try you to, know, uh, just try to, hey, you, but, we, but that's what I mean. You have like a different, you have a different, you know, view on it. Yeah. You know, yeah, not being one sure. or the other. And, and um, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting to kind of see that. I mean, I, 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 that was more when I was like, when I first moved to New York, I, I have to say that, you know, as time has gone on, I've, I've seen uh, less division. I feel like that at least. I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, but that, okay. I, I feel like that. Yeah. But that's, that's good to hear. I think that's really great, like, um, information and just insight, um, for other, you know, young Asian American or Asian kids that are thinking about going into this music. Like, you know, it's good to definitely acknowledge, first of all, that this is a black American experience, uh, music and that it comes from that and requires a lot of self digging too. I, I, you know, after a while you got to realize who you are and, like exactly. how you fit in the picture. So that is yeah. very true. That is very, very true. insightful to, you know, yeah. just provide yeah. that. Is there anything you wanted to say to just the audience that we do have uh, at the moment? Well, yeah, I, you know, going through this whole COVID thing, I think everybody, you know, keep their, keep their spirits up. Um, you know, I'm putting on a, a happy face right now, but it's, it, it's not easy. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, we're all in this together. We're all feeling uh, the loss of, of not seeing each other and, and the performances and whatever, you know, even if you're not a musician, just whatever everybody's going through, it's not easy. But, you know, I keep telling myself, I, I just focus on the things that uh, I'm lucky to have, um, you know, spend this time with the family. And um, I do yeah. feel like uh, I'm learning a lot, you know, more than ever through this experience in my teaching and even in my playing, you know, just kind of doing the projects that I'm doing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and if anybody's seeing this and, and are, are interested in, in whatever teaching on Zoom, I'm going to be doing a little bit of that on the, the webinar too, and uh, you know, trying to create a virtual project or whatever it is. Uh, that's actually what's been taking my time up the most lately. Is like, literally, like 50 directors have been like hitting me up for <laughs> Zoom lessons and, and phone yep. calls yep. on just uh, you know how I've been teaching and, and I'm still kind of keeping the level pretty high and, and you know. I'm doing my best. I, I, I'm willing to share anything. That's what the music is about. So, thank you so much, Julius. Thank you, Peter, for, for having me. This is a great thing you're doing, man. Keep it going, man. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you for all the inspiration, man. So, yeah. you know, appreciate it, and uh, right. hope to see you, you know, like soon, but not too yes. soon. Ben. Yeah, not too soon. <laughs> I'll see you online. Right, right. I'll see you online. Doing some things, and we'll uh, post the link to the um, webinar uh, when we great. get the link. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Thank you All so right. much. Thank so you, thanks, Julius. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Professor McQueen continued to mentor me after I graduated college and helped me land a gig in Illinois Jacquette's big band, which was like graduate school for me. Jackie and Illinois were unified in their vision that jazz music is a language. My work with them and other great musicians and educators have inspired me to teach music as a language, to teach music as a process, and to stress the importance of work over time.